Welcome back to The Daily Wrap. I'm Joe Concha, along with Rick Unger, Heather Hansen, and Bill Tucker. As Senator John Kerry negotiates a deal with Iran, reporters have been interested in how quickly sanctions could be lifted following an agreement. Part of those sanctions includes a $50 billion of frozen Iranian oil revenue. This, according to the Wall Street Journal. Iran is demanding all sanctions be lifted immediately, while the White House would prefer a more phased approach. Obviously, handing over 50 bill in cash in Iran to, uh, to Iran, I should say, could be dangerous for the U.S. and its allies. You see, they've kind of funded terrorism before. Anyway, Reuters, Ashad Mohammed asked State Department spokesman Marie Harf about what the U.S. is doing to get Iran to stop funding terrorism if sanctions are lifted. We have all these other ways of countering their influence in the region. It is a challenge, though, because a lot of this doesn't take very much money. I agree with you that it's a challenge. I, I didn't say it was a challenge. The, the, what, I, what I'm trying to get at. You don't think it's at, a challenge? Uh, I'm, it's, I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm here to try to get answers to mine. And after that little mix-up, Harp also added that the liquid brunch, uh, brunch mixer with Sigma Chi and Pika still on in Adams Morgan this Sunday. That should be noted. But back to the serious business at hand. What about the Wall Street Journal claiming Iran can get $50 billion of their oil money released? The way I understand it's presented is essentially this is some kind of like a, I don't know, for lack of a better word, a signing bonus. Um, does, whether or not it is, comes under sanctions relief or not, uh, it, does Iran get any money at all? Get access on, to any money. On day one, uh, after signing, before implementation. I'm happy to check again with our team and take okay, another look at the story. Because that is a different thing. I'm happy to look, I just said I'm happy to look into it. Rush week also starting May 2. Oh, stop. So. <laughs> she's an intern. Uh, she's not a sorority sister. All right. She just looks like she should be running a <laughs> deal somewhere. Come on. <laughs> anyway, so she doesn't have an answer, clearly. But the question remains, gang. Signing bonus, Heather, you have to like that term. That uh, really yeah. took I mean, off, right? It really right? took off. It's, yeah, a, it's a great term. Are we going to hand over the money day one, or are we actually going to verify first? It certainly seems that President Obama is ready to. When In response to these types of questions, he keeps talking about the snapback provision, that the sanctions will come back if they break the deal. How does that help us if they now have $50 billion to get into with cyber terror, with funding their all of their terrorism acts throughout the, throughout the country? Bill, why do we always seem to be negotiating in this particular deal from a position of weakness instead of strength? Because when you give that's away the 50 million, you kind of lose a little you leverage. Know, Joe, that's the question. I don't understand why we're negotiating from a position of weakness at all. No, we shouldn't give the 50 billion dollars. He came out, he, President Obama came out and said, we have a deal. Iran turned around and said, Mom, that's not the deal we have. He called him, in effect, a liar. At the, at the, you know, at the very best, misrepresenting the agreement. And we're willing to turn around and say, oh, here, oh, Heather, 50 billion. Right. It is a signing bonus. That's what it is. Rick. Well, first, I want us all to collectively pat ourselves on the backs for telling this story truthfully. When I woke up this morning and I read on one of the network sheets and another allegedly credible newspaper, they were all calling this a signing bonus and inferring that we'd be writing a taxpayer check. That's not what happened. The Wall Street Journal reported it correctly. There is a hundred plus million dollars. I'm million. It's billion. 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 It's billion. Of oil money that belongs to Iraq <laughs> yeah, that is frozen. Iraq or Iran? Iran. Boy, okay. I'm really screwing this up. <laughs> uh, that, that is frozen in U.S. banks. So if we were to give any, allow this money to go, it's their money. Yes. That said, it's a legitimate conversation to have whether we should do it. We know what Iran has been known to do with their money, right. which is to spend it on terrorism. So I can absolutely understand people who go, no way. I don't think, based on the information we have that it's appropriate to go all the way to the other side and say, well, this is an example of negotiating out of weakness because we don't know if anybody's actually agreed to give them anything yet. So why don't we wait and see on this? Heather, do you think there's something deeper here in the fact that we are, in essence, fighting alongside of Iran in Iraq against ISIS, particularly in the northern territories, the Kurdish territories, into Crete, for example, that, that fell recently uh, to Iraqi fighters, which are really supported by Iran. I just wonder if there's a lot we don't know. Well, I mean, but we have the exact opposite situation going on in Yemen, right. where we have exactly. proxies fighting, you know, with our different and we're funds. about to blockade and, and intercept huge Iranian huge ships. Things mm -hmm. going Don't on. think that won't have an impact on whether they get their money or not. Absolutely. And looking back in the 2013 deal that we had with Iran, they got $11 billion back. Yeah. So that money is being used to fund wars against us or our allies. It is extremely worrisome. And when Marie said something about getting spun up on this issue, it's, it's disheartening 
to think that that's the way that they, oh, just won't get spun up on this issue. It's a major problem. I think she was saying, I think she was <laughs> saying. <laughs> don't that bother me on this because I don't have any answers. Know the answer, exactly. right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, interns, you never know what they're saying. Right? Oh. It should be noted that Miss Harp is 33 years old. She is not an intern, That's nor right. is she in any no, sorority. Right. Well, she might have been. Well, she might have been in a not sorority. Anymore. We actually, we absolutely have to look that up. Control room, Google, wiki page, uh, Wikipedia, Marie so Harp, so sorority. Stupid. Look that up She's and get that formula. She's spinning some really lousy news. Incredible. So Heather, but you have to, you have to, <laughs> but Rick, you have to know when you go in front of a crowd of people, especially reporters, right. that you're going to get asked that question. Well, yeah, if right. it's in the news, it's been in the Wall pretty Street good Journal. chance. It's a good question. And she has to walk in front. I will not argue with you there. Uh, you know, no. And so I had no, and I thought he was very gentlemanly about explaining, no, no, I get to ask the question. Yeah, so right. Right. You, you right. need to answer you this, because like, I don't know the a little, answer. A little snarky, but pretty cool. Yeah, well, it's true. Is this a case of following the money? So before we had doubts, almost all of us, that a deal wouldn't be made at the end of June. Now when you hear things like this being a possibility, does suddenly the Ayatollah's rhetoric go away and this buys our way to a, to a deal? Why do you want to buy this deal? Right. Oh, I don't want to I buy just, anything. Why, 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 why would we buy this? I just don't. Well, right well we so should be. Have you seen the deal? <laughs> and thank you for saying that, Bill, because none it. of us have seen it yet, but that has stopped nobody from saying this is a horrible deal or because this is a great the deal. Largest it's sponsor true. Of state the they're the largest deal. Sponsor I've never heard one person say it's a great deal. Actually, I've heard a couple of people. I don't agree with them. Really? But I've heard a couple of people say it. <laughs> okay. And and I don't know how any of us can have this judgment as of yet since we haven't but seen this deal. But the great thing is now at least Congress gets to see it. Yeah, I, I mean, agree that with is that. a you wonderful that. thing. And now they know that we know that the Wall Street Journal has reported that's that this may be an issue. That's because we have so much confidence in Congress. Oh, the more eyes look at this, the better. And and I do think, especially on this particular issue, our president is not the best when it comes to foreign policy and that there's others in Congress who are Honestly, better. Honestly, I'd rather have, and I, I don't mean this facetiously, I'd rather have your eyes looking at it I would than, love that. than the people in influence? Congress. I'll gladly give my input. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a lawyer, right? You're not an accountant That's or anything right. like no, that no. because it's a purse strings kind of issue. Not even close. Okay. Well, anyway. Coming up next, should we limit legal immigration to protect American jobs? A very interesting question. Governor Scott Walker, maybe flip-flopping, maybe not. We're going to talk about that in a bit. This is The Daily Wrap, and it's only on Newsmax TV, live from New York City.